Reverend Father Professor Joe Yunisa and my darling Mrs. Kadija Sujan. Good evening, everybody. First, let me apologize for coming so late. And also to wish you the best of luck in the exams. How, how I wish I could turn back the clock. How I wish I could be like you once again. Many years ago, when I was like you, we were seven in our class as economics. Seven. Four of us graduated. When I finished university, job market was available to me. So many openings, so many positions. I don't know whether you will be jealous of me. I should be. During our time, we had a library, no computers. We use what they call a one, it's a central computer. So we had, we had to learn a little bit of cobalt before you could access it. When they had a library, which is not called a resource center, Under candlelight, shared books to the library. If you had an assignment, you pick up one or two books. Whatever pages are all torn, you have to go elsewhere. These were difficult days, very challenging. There are also these challenges, integrity, the challenge your intellectual capacity in plus outside of this. To the students like you, I should envy you. colleague of mine a couple of days ago. This class at Fourier College was one to five of our students to ask him how do you teach? I mentioned to the part-time electrician at Fourier College from the Central Bank. I started off with 50 students I stopped out of the group because I could not back the schools. Even though it was quantitative, it was difficult. That's why today's education has this huge challenge 
challenge investment in the Atlantic to have capacity to our students. But of course, what you have today, I never had. So, even if you go there and Google Salema to Kamara, there will be many Salema to Kamara. You have just to dissect and choose the type of Salema to Kamara you want to go to. The internet has made the foundation a bit of it easier for students who want to use the internet. We cannot avoid the internet. even challenge your lecturers today. In our days, we could not challenge our lecturers because they would come with their scripts. They read on the blackboard and they take their script to no handouts. I wish I could turn back the clock. But in all of this, what matters now it's our future. Now we prepare ourselves for a better future. A future that is intergenerational. It's not a future for us today. It's for our children, our children's children, for our generation of today, of tomorrow, and generations yet. This is the challenge today. How do we prepare for generations yet unborn? That's why you are here. Those of us who have ventured into politics, for me, I'm a novice in politics. I'm learning the game of politics. I am being baptized by fire. I'm coming with a different dimension of politics. You see, my professional is there. As a professional, <laughs> as a professional, whether you like it or not, you are taught not to lie. Because if you lie, facts and figures will be Better to say the truth and not the truth. That's the truth. If you fail, you go and apologize. They will believe you. If you make promises, break those vows in an arrogant manner, without regret or apologies, and then they continue to make more lies. A good nation. You are not building a solid ground for the generations today, tomorrow, and the generations yet to come. It's better to say the truth than you lie. This is the type of politics that I don't like politics of deceit, politics of broken vows. You, have, you may have been presented with several manifestos. Our manifesto in 2023 is different. It's a genuine, factual document. There are no big promises. The only promise I have in this manifesto, which we call One Nation, 
is that I vow that during my tenure, when you sleep, I will wake up. You sleep tomorrow, you wake up in the morning, you open the window, you look outside, you will see a difference. Yes. I'm saying this because <laughs> I know. I'm saying this because there are a lot of practical experiences you can draw from in developing a manifesto, particularly in the case of Sierra Leone. Many years ago, starting with the 80s, we had what we call Poverty Reduction Strategy Papers, PRSPs. In Sierra Leone, we had interim, we had PRSPs, one after the other. And then we had the war. And then the war ended. Then we had a post-conflict reconstruction. For me, that period of post-conflict reconstruction we began in the year 2002 after we signed the agreement with rebels. And Sierra Leone had peace. It's not a thing. It's a system. Because building a nation is a continuous process. It's not a definitive moment. It's just an event. Every day you sleep, you wake. You must contribute to building a nation. That should be your attitude. In 2008, as Minister of Finance, we developed the agenda for change. In 2013, 1213, we developed the number of pillars. We increased the number of pillars from four to eight. In 2018, I developed a manifesto. Unfortunately, I was I never had the opportunity to present it here. to governing for the grassroots. That is in 2023 we have a new manifest one manifest. Everything is circumstantial. of the event of the times to develop your ambition. It is designed to resurrect hope, to resurrect confidence, If you don't have hope, you will not go anywhere. The biggest challenge which we have today in Sierra Leone in implementing this manifesto is managing expectations. Mind you, we have traveled after the war. Phases. Phases in political leadership. Phases in economic effort. 2000 
2002 to 2007, our first five years of post conflict construction under President Ahmad Tijan Kaba, we devoted our attention to institution building. Building institution. Public sector financial report, reforms, macroeconomic reforms. financial system, financial sector reforms, because this was required at that particular time. Those five years, we have to woo the international community. We made back trust in Sierra Leone. And then we ask you, do you have institutions? How strong is your budget? your revenue generation, domestic revenue generation. How strong is your management of international aid that we give to you? We have systems that we control, systems that we provide fiduciary. Developing a strong institutional framework. Any country that does not have institutions will not succeed. Even with the best politics, the country will survive. But even with the worst politics, if you have good institutions with integrity, you will survive. The country will survive. Many of you, the institutions that we set up, National Revenue Authority, where we combine the accountants, audit, income tax department, and customs and excise department, brought them together. And we put a lot of examples. The Zambia example, we went to Kenya. We went as far as Latin America. We drove that. Today we have NRA. We brought back local government and decentralization after 30 years. Because that we believe was the best form of service delivery. We have to take development to the people. Don't let them struggle to find development. So many institutions, the ACC, anti-corruption, for transparency and accountability in the use of the public funds. That's it. It's a means of social security for the entire. So many institutions that we set up. So many rules and regulations that we brought in. meant to bring back the state into a proper focus. We did not do roads. We did not do big hospitals. We couldn't be big schools. Why? Because we depended on the material assistance. And you know what happens in, with the material assistance? They come in when there is a crisis, post-crisis period. As soon as there is peace and stability, they run away and run away elsewhere. Where there is more trouble, they go there again. 2008-2012, and it's been the last five years, first five years. This was when we took on the hardware economic development. Roads, hospitals, schools. Do you think there are more institutions than that? We are working. Then the next five years came. During those first five years, we had a lot of change. By the end of that, we thought we did a successful program. 
Then we had the agenda for prosperity, 2013. Unfortunately, 2013, we could not have a proper interface between the agenda for change and the agenda for prosperity. We had the collapse in 2014. We had a more slide. We had a sharp collapse in the presence of iron ore. What happened? When the economy had been nurtured to become the fastest economy, and that is very cool. Up to the world, it's really the hardest country to the fastest economy. 2012. By 2014 to 2015, the 20% in growth. In 2010 to 2012, slumped to minus 20. We managed by the end of the second five year surface by 6.6%. Six six the time we left government 2017, it was 3.6, 3.8%. This is positive. And everything was positive. For you to recover, to fix an economy after Ebola, for you to fix an economy after the sharp collapse of iron ore prices, which we depended on, which gave us the fastest growth, it was not an easy task. So the simple thing for me is that if we could do it at that time, the economy we have today and also be fixed. It's not the magic. It's not the magic. Because to do so, I know what it will require. I'm doing this preambles because even with the best of intentions, no manifesto can be properly implemented if you don't have certain underpinnings, certain principles. If you don't understand why you are coming from, People then say, if you don't know side they go, no side they go. The past is as important as the future. You learn. The first thing you need is called leadership. Leadership that listens. A leadership with humility. That engages constructive dialogue with these people. This is the same. Way. Politics is about serving the people. It's not about serving the people. Therefore, your first line of defense, you are for the people. You are their first line of defense. On the river side, they also are your first line of defense. If you do good work, the people then will defend you. If you do bad work, they will deny you. Do not say even anyone. So I am scared to use political jargons. I am scared because I was told this is an apolitical. This is not political. Not to say anything. If it were not so, I would have said, oh, why not? Don't listen to me. <laughs> I'm not going to say that. But notwithstanding, I can remind myself. <laughs> but this is what it takes good leadership. It's a leadership that is tolerant, you must tolerate criticisms. You must tolerate the good, the bad, the ugly. That's why you are a leader. If you can only tolerate the good, then you are not a leader. You have no challenge. National unity, national cohesion is a strong underpinning. That's why in our manifesto, it is our first pillar. It is our first pillar. Building one nation, rebuilding national unity. 
national cohesion. If you don't have it, you will go anywhere. Where Selin is today, I think we need that. We need national unity. We have to bring back the country into one, as one country. We are one people before God and man. Let nobody refuse that identity. We are all sons of God. Therefore, we are all one. One. We must respect each other. That's why mutual respect is critical. Environment. A house where you have a lot of husband and wife fighting, children fighting, a child fighting a mother or father. It's not a house. It's not a Why? Because it is built on a sandy soil. It's not a Manifesto as unity must all be united. We must be partners. Fixing an economy is not a one man's business. It is not impossible to fix an economy that is broken. You are not responsible for his breaking down. You can still fix it. Provided you have good intentions to fix the economy. It's come from your heart. If it's coming from your heart, the first thing you do is you look for good people. Don't look for political rewards. It will take you anywhere. Make the government as you want to make it. But please, make a government manageable. She's a minister because he or she is your brother, your uncle. Or he was the chairman of the party in one conspiracy. You don't care about or not. He's around there in a square hole. Square holes are meant for square pegs. Round holes are meant for round pegs. Make up your mind what you want to do. Democracy. Voice. Legitimacy to your citizenry. Allow them to speak out. Not learn anything as a leader. If you don't have this attributes, this underpinning, it cannot be implemented. It becomes non implementable. By the time, in our own case, your five year finishes, you know what you do. You do. Show anything because when the interface is wrong, the transition is wrong, the basis on which you do anything is wrong. You cannot build an economy on lies, you cannot build a country on lies, on false assumptions, on criticism. You blame everybody any day. Samura Kamara is responsible for me. I'm saying this because we say that students, children are the future leaders of tomorrow. But honestly, you are the leaders of today, tomorrow, and the future. We have a big challenge. We have ten pillars, so we have moved from four to eight. Now we have ten. The new ten that we brought in, which were not there during the agenda for prosperity, 
One was the diaspora, engagement to diaspora. And that's our last pillar. Then we brought in climate change today. Because of the experience we have with the Muslim. Now, we have our challenges as a country, which this manifesto is trying to focus on. The first one, how do we fix this economy? Under COVID, went down to minus 2.2% of GDP. That was supposed to stop. Now, inflation is gone up. Inflation is gone up. The wage bill has gone up. We have a price. Prices have gone up. A price wage spiral. The exchange rate has collapsed in our hand. Our currency has deteriorated. The pressure is so badly. What do you do? Confidence is broken now. Confidence in the system. Confidence in our institutions because we have interfered, we have politicized our institutions. This manifesto is going to correct all of that. Once you have a strong state capture on institutions, the operates and operates. The operates his master's voice. That's not a national institution, it's a personal institution. As we look at the economic deficiencies, we look at the cost of living crisis. They are all interrelated. If the economy is not growing, business is not growing, nothing works. Income, personal incomes are not growing. Up to today, we are living at below five hundred dollars per capita GDP. Countries we started together: China, for instance, Singapore, Malaysia. South Korea, go and watch that GDP per capita. Thousands and thousands of US dollars. It's an empty effort to achieve it. It's not that we cannot do it. We have to refocus our minds and our effort. It should be politics. Politics for oneself to sustain yourself in which can power. We have to change our political orientation. Let's change it. That's why this manifesto goes beyond five years of APC coming in. On June 24, 2023. It goes beyond those five years. A couple of weeks before I released this manifesto, I had two and a half hours discussion with the IMF, the team, the country team for the IMF. Actually, they invited me a virtual conference. And we're there. And we agreed that there is an economic crisis and we have to fix it. They wanted my opinion, I gave them my opinion. And we agreed on seven areas to look at. And I agreed with them that I will put this in my manifesto because they wanted an assurance that someone. When he becomes president of the Republic of Sierra Leone, June 24, 2023, we will adhere to the IMF program. We have an IMF program. We discuss it and we agree. And I have to write a letter to, of committer that I will support the program. And I did that letter. 
I only told them two things. You must agree that it's not business as usual. Abject poverty. Poverty is one of the uncomfortable truths in Sierra Leone. The cost of living crisis must be addressed. We have to fix the exchange rate. We have to fix our currency. After the Second World War, Europe needed a Marshall Plan. How I wish Sierra Leone could have a Marshall Plan. Collapsed domestic revenue. So it's a big job. We have to go back and build to that institution. The NRA, how it works, how it operates, the post authority, how it works, how it operates, the Ministry of Trade and Industry. Russia might want to change the name of the Ministry of Trade and Industry. We have to find a new title for it. Government is not about giving jobs to everybody, every Jack and Jill. No. So we have to rethink government. Too many ministries. When you came to the Ministry of Finance and Development, why did you make it again? to Ministry of Development and Finance. This small economy. Each time you create an institution, you must think about the administrative costs. You must think about overmanning and administration. Because once you do that, everybody wants a job. Everybody wants a job. And this economy is overmanned. Our government is overmanned. It means too many people. Too many people. Too many institutions. A minister for Western area. Wanna tell me? I mean, I don't know if this is serious. When did the minister for Western area? You have the mayor, you have the chairman of council. Give them responsibilities. Do I need a ministry? Why did you speak the other ministries? So many new institutions that we have to look at. Streamline them. The budget, today the biggest challenge in the government budget. One, the wage bill has taken over 50-60% of recurrent expenditures. So you know what that means? There's nothing left for capital. And if you don't have capital development, the economy will not grow. You cannot acquire savings. Where you have the basic savings, 10%, you will not go forward. You will not go forward. So I'm just, just raising this outline. The next one. So once we are able to provide national unity, Economic deficiencies are addressed, the cost of emergencies is addressed. The third pillar is to far efforts on job creation. That's a pigment of imagination. <laughs> you cannot. Because the economy is not set for that. There is no value addition in agriculture. The mining sector we depend on is neither here nor there today. You cannot develop an economy based on one single commodity. It's a disaster. The economy must have shock absorbers. You must diversify it 
And that pacification is not only a word of mouth. You must do it. Don't just toy it. Don't just say it. You must do it. And who are the people who have pacified the economy? They are the operatives, the farmers. As I put Resiana, I did go Petete, I did go Casada, I did go small tobacco, small tobacco. That's who will prosper, will not hunger. That's what Sergio needs now. Don't just say it. We have to do it. You have to have industrial souls. And it's not easy to create an industrial soul, but you need them. You need industrial souls. This is where, when you finish university, it is operators of these souls that will give you employment. You cannot put all your basket in the government as your only employer. Government does not have the capacity. It does not. Maximum 100,000 jobs. And that includes teachers. <laughs> you cannot. So we have to be very, very careful in how we develop new pathways new pathways for the adults, for the youth, and for the women to earn what we call a living wage. It is not about minimum wage or threshold income. It's a living wage. A way that you can depend on to pay your rent somehow. You can have your food basket somehow. You can take transportation somehow. You can go to hospital. And this is what we have to work towards. When the economy grows, there is nothing wrong that will not give you a living wage. I'm talking about four thousand five hundred to five million, four million five hundred. I keep confusing myself. This million versus the old million. It's a big confusion. has disappeared from Sierra Leone. <laughs> the last time I saw him on television, he was dancing in, in Texas with a big bowl of hat, enjoying himself, and we are languishing here. It is what I see the real population. It's also properly thought out of policy at all. I'm sorry to say. But we have to go with it, we have to stay with it. And sanitize it. And sanitize it. Okay? We have to do that. Because when the governor tells you, Governor, how is the region of nation going? He said, Let God help me. <laughs> okay. Now, you have other pillars. Just quickly, we have a pillar that talks about accelerating investments in our people. Focus on capabilities of our women, of our children, and our youth. I think the big thing here is what do we mean by human capital development? Capacity building. Interpretation of human capital development for our neighbors is San all your commander. And the party will take over from. And they bring it over. Is that your man? We are saying we need national human development, capital development at the national level. No tribe, no region, no political dimensions, nothing. It's about. 
you merit it, you take the job. And it's about preparing the youth adequately to take on good jobs. To take on the good jobs. Not to any job, it's a job. The car wash, is that a job? For the youth, is that a job? No wonder the youth are saying, no more push, we want you. No more push, we want you. That's the push place. No. We want to accelerate investment, investment. We want to look at the educational system. I'm not going to, as they did, I'm not going to terminate any initiative. No. Government is continuity. Government is continuity. If you come, you need a bad policy, absorb it and try to correct it. But don't dismiss it because you don't know the context within which that initiative was launched. Yes, free quality education, the concept is good. If you manage it properly, if you can afford it financially, if you can train the teachers, if you can have the schools, you can have the colleges, you can have everything. Yes, it is good if you can absorb many, many people. When enrollment increases, if you can absorb them on the payroll, support them in the budget, it is good. But I want to announce it because I want free votes. To excite the voters? No. That's why today we don't have the free, we don't have the quality, we don't have the education. Because it is not new to APC. In our time, we had a very good subvention system for education. It was working. It was working. Okay. Today is a digital age, you know, so we have to spend effort in developing a digital economy. Let us digitalize Sierra Leone. It can be done. That's why we have it under pillar five. Pillar six, the people are strengthening this international rural development. We have collapsed in local governments and international program. As because it's not working, rural development has stopped. We have to go back to that and move forward. Enhance democratic good governance and rule of law. This is very challenging. If there is no rule of law, if there is no democracy, if you deny the people that democratic space, if you deny them access to the rule of law, access to justice, you are not building a state. Yes. Because it's a school. And a very beautiful reform program for the education and legal sector in this country. We're going back to that sector. institutions, they are meant to serve the people, meant to serve individuals. We have the best brains in the law faculty in Sierra Leone. They are there in the judiciary. Let's allow them to work. It's free lawyers. Let them work. Within the law. Okay. Climate change. We have been tested by climate change and environmental disasters. Also, the most slide is a typical example. Thousands of, of lives were lost. We have no good explanation about it today. At the beach there, museum. Go to Rwanda and see that museum. Tourists flock there. 
There are so many virgin areas that we need to identify and exploit. So I'm not just going for the state of school, business as usual. No. Entertainment, the music industry. In their film industry. It's one of the most flourishing sectors today in Nigeria, the film industry. Even in Saldonia, all of us who watch Nigerian films, not to say they hate, why can't you support our film industry here? I'm sure someday Father John today might think of opening a film department, a filming department, a faculty. Arts and films, this sort of thing. We have a lot of talent in Sierra Leone. Not all of us are academicians, not so. Let's go skills development. Let's just exploit those areas. Social protection and social enhancement. This is about this part of equalization, equality, equity. Let us equalize somehow. Take from the rich and give to the poor. But you can also take from the poor and give to the rich. But the poor can work for the rich and make money. Yeah? By the end of the agenda for change, we had a dream. And our dream was, and still is, 2025. Sorry, so 2035. By 2035, Salon becomes. That's our dream. If other countries have done it, Salon can do it. And this manifesto is a building block for achieving that. God bless you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Dr. Samura has had a long day. And uh, at this juncture, what I want to do, I want to I want to invite five people whom Dr. Sabura will commission as ambassadors for his manifesto. Umuru Sise, Umang Sise, Aminata Esako, Aminata Esako has been here since SPA. Aisata Bangura, Alaji Bangura, and Daniel Ture, please come forward. Hello. Yes, yes. As I told you earlier, development is a partnership. Manifesto implementation is a partnership. So, mind you, this is done by the university. Don't ask me how. But, what's the name? Umar. Umar, she said, you take one of these. Umar. Aminata Santo. Aminata. Alaji Mandura. I said I'm going to run. I'm coming. I take. With your permission, sir. And with your permission, I'm at the university. I hereby appoint you as our manifesto implementation advisor. From you, Nima. I'll be visiting you from time to time. You must make sure 
you read this thoroughly and understand it. If I have any problem, I will refer to you. You will teach me how to do Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Samura, finally. Thank you. Honestly, we would have loved to go on and on. Doctor has had a long day. But at this juncture, I want to thank Dr. Samura because he chose two of our own. Mama Papa Bangura and Ibrahim Bari to be parliamentary candidate. I think we to thank him for that. Ladies and gentlemen, at this juncture, we, you know, honestly, this is an academic forum with our intellectual discourse with Dr. Samura. He has had a People are still waiting for him at the Osun ground. I want to invite Ibrahim to give us the vote of thanks. Um, Mr. Doctor, Doctor, we want to thank you for the opportunity and putting time for the University of Academy. We also want to thank the administration for creating a platform for there to be political balance for everyone. We also want to appreciate that of the Manifesto Forum for giving students and people in the municipality of Makemi to hear from you directly so that we'll be able to know the future that's embedded in the Manifesto for the come June 20, 2024. We also want to extend our uh, gratitude to that of the students for taking their time despite the exams tomorrow or today and coming here to witness this August gathering. Thank you all. Thank you, University of Makini, as we continue to build a civilization of law. Thank you very much, sir. Our journey together, let us love one another as you need us. Pray for us, our journey together, let us love We are wishing you guys success as you face your exams tomorrow. Keep it